So one of the interesting things we've been able to do is to go back to some Swedish data from the 70s and 80s. Uh, these were blood samples collected as part of a completely different study on uh, heart disease. And it being Sweden, we know exactly what happens to all of these guys. If somebody got prostate cancer or they died from prostate cancer, there's great registries. So we can go and identify those men, go back to the freezers, pull their bloods and have a look. And there's a, a couple of very interesting findings that uh, we've been able to make. Uh, the first one is that a midlife PSA is incredibly strongly predictive of your long-term risk of aggressive prostate cancer. Now, a lot of people have said, you know, PSA is not a very good test. And when they say that, they, what they mean is PSA is not a good test for prostate cancer, and they're completely right. But prostate cancer is not a very good endpoint because all guys will get prostate cancer if they live long enough, right? So what we're really interested in is those aggressive prostate cancers, the metastatic or fatal prostate cancers. And then what we find is PSA is incredibly prognostic. So the discrimination for a single PSA between the age of 45 and 60 for your long-term risk of death from prostate cancer, and many of these guys have been followed up for 25 or 30 years, uh, the discrimination is 0 0.85, 0 0.9, very, very uh, powerful. Unlike anything else we see in, in oncology or made, maybe in, in medicine in general, to have a marker that is so strongly predict predictive of long-term outcome. And there's a completely separate set of studies we've been able to do, and that's on the concept of lead time. How much does getting your PSA test advance the time at which you know that a patient has cancer compared to when they just show up in your clinic with some kind of symptoms? And we, we have the blood, and we, can, we know when people showed up with, uh, with their prostate cancer. And then we also, so we, we can take those men with PSAs between three and 10 who subsequently got cancer and say, how long did it take them to get cancer? And we found a couple of interesting things. One is it's, it's longer than often been reported. The median's around 12, 14 years. Often it's been reported to be somewhat shorter than that, eight or nine years. And we realized that was because those other studies didn't follow up men for very long. If you only follow up men for 10 years, you can't have a lead time of 12 years.